Now we have another problem with probability. This is a, a actually very good applied problem. So let's set up the problem. There's a disease out there and we have estimates that 10% of the population have the disease. Now we have a test to determine if you have the disease. You can think of this as a swine flu perhaps, except that I think a lot more than 10% have that. Our test to detect it is 92% accurate. So that means if you have the disease, it's going to notice that you have it 92% of the time. But it also has a 5% false alarm rate. Now, uh, that means if you don't have the disease, 5% of the time it will say you have the disease. So we have two questions that we want to analyze. You test positive. What is the probability you have the disease? In other cases, your friend tests negative. What is the probability your friend actually has the disease despite his negative test? Now, this is a problem here people get confused about a lot of the time. They say I tested positive. I should have it 92% of the time because the test is 92% accurate. And this kind of thing is, is uh, you know, it's a common misconception we're going to look at. You could talk about this with regards to lie detector tests, testing baggage at the airport to make sure no prohibited items like guns or knives are going on the airport. All these kind of things involve similar mathematics. The numbers may change, the populations may change. In this one, I didn't even tell you a number of people because you don't really need it. You simply need this number here. The 10% have it. So, and what we have here is a Bayesian probability, but we have to keep our terms very clear. There's two different things that are going on. You can really have the disease, so there's reality. You have the disease or you don't. And you can test as if you have the disease. Test positive or test negative. So what we're trying to find is the probability that we'll, we'll say, we'll call H for have the disease, given you test positive. So we know you tested positive. What is the probability you have the disease? And actually, this is easy to calculate. There's a formula called Bayes' formula for this. And you, you can look it up, but we're not going to really need it. We're going to kind of go around some this, the terminology to write Bayes' formula makes it look far worse than it really is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start off here and make a tree. And the tree starts with reality first. You either have the disease or you don't. So don't have it. Block over H is a not having the disease. So what's the probability you have the disease? Well, 10%. Then obviously, the probability you don't have the disease is 90%. Okay, now in either case, you can test two different ways. Positive, negative. Maybe I should have made those a little further apart. So this is dealing with our test of the condition. So here's reality, here's our test. Now if you have the disease, you will test positive 92% of the time. 0.92. And now that gives us an obvious number here. If you test positive 92% of the time, you will test negative 8% of the time, or 0.08. And we can get these final probabilities by multiplying. 0.10 times 0.92 is 0 0.092, 0 0.008. Now here, you don't have the disease. How often are you going to test positive if you do not have the disease? The borrower remembers not. So not having the disease is what we have here, the opposite of having it. If we don't have the disease, we're going to test positive 5% of the time. 0 0.05 is a probability because that's, our false, that's a false alarm. You got a positive result when you didn't actually have the, the disease. That means you should test negative, obviously, 95% of the time. The test should be correct. You don't have it. It tells you you don't have it. It confirms your, your non-having it case. What is 0 0.05 times 0 0.9? 0, 0.045, and what is 0.9 times 0 0.95? 0 0.855. Now down to rounding, obviously these numbers should sum back up to 100%. This line here should sum to 100, this tree should sum to 100, this tree here should sum to 100. Everyone that has the disease gets a test result, so 100% of them go one place or the other. Everyone that doesn't have it gets a result, and we've accounted for 100% of our population. So you can add these back to make sure I haven't messed up the mathematics. Another check. You can add all four and make sure we have 100%. Now to our two questions, and this is where it gets interesting. Just like in the previous probability slide where we limited our world to people that had the given condition, we now know you tested positive. That means you're either in this group or this group. What is the probability you have a disease? Let's get the whole world first. If you tested positive, you're either in this 0 0.045 or the other one, 0 0.092. Those are the groups that tested positive. 
and says, what's the probability you have the disease? Which of these two numbers means you had the disease? And this one was from not having it. This one's from having it, so clearly 0.092. And our answer is 0.092 divided by 0.045 plus 0.092. Let's see what that gives us. Assuming I can type properly today, I get a probability of 67% or 0.67 rounded off. So that's a lot worse than we might have thought. Initially, a lot of people will guess that it's 92% that you have the disease, since it's 92% accurate. But it is far lower than that. It's only two-thirds chance you have a disease, despite a you know, 9 out of 10, better than 9 out of 10 original probability. If this was lower, it would be even worse. Now, your friend tested negative. What is the probability they have the disease? So we do the same type of logic. And uh, maybe I'll put the answer up here, because I seem to be writing off the screen if I write below this line. So I have paper, but we don't have camera there, so we'll move up here. If you test negative, you're in the two negative classes, so 0.855 plus 0 0.008. Negative and negative, add it together. Now what is the probability they have the disease? Which of these two numbers came from someone having the disease? Well, clearly have is up here, so it's 0 0.008. And we're going to get a remarkably unlikely event here. I'm getting 0 0.009, so not even a 1 in 100, slightly lower than 1 in 100 percent, so 9 out of 1,000 people. Well, if you think about it, you were only you were 90 percent likely to not have the disease before we knew anything, and now you have a test that's confirming you don't have the disease, so you're really, really unlikely to have it. In fact, the probability you don't have it would be 1 minus that, or 0 0.9907. So 99 percent of the time, if you've tested negative, when you weren't likely to have it in the beginning, you're even less likely to have it now. If you've tested positive, you went from a 10 percent probability of having it before you took the test up to 67. So it's made it much more likely to have a disease, but not as likely as that number. Depending on the number, sometimes it can still be extremely unlikely to have a condition, even with a positive test. So I hope this has been instructive in how we can do practical Bayes calculations, and we don't really need the confusing Bayes formula.